Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Into Zimbabwe, a weekly program brought to you by the Zimbabwe Human Rights Monitors Platform. I'm your host Karen Manzira alongside Liam Takura Kaninga. Hello Liam. Hey Karen, how are you? I'm good, thanks for joining me. So in today's episode, we're going to dissect on the issue of child marriages in Zimbabwe, particularly paying attention to the issue of memory machaya that was awash um, in social media. So join us after the break as we dissect around the two issues. Hi, you and your pursuit of knowledge in the academic arena, you deserve to do so without fear or favor, let alone any interference or public pressure. Your government has to make available all the resources you need to learn and ensure that you manage to express your thoughts and opinions without cohesion or fear of victimization. Now that's academic freedom. But is this demand true to your case? The Zimbabwe National Students Union, ZINASU, in conjunction with Denmark National Students Union, DSF, present Free to Learn, a weekly series focused on discussing academic freedom as a fundamental right. So I, Liam Kaninga, invite you to participate on the show as I interact with influential figures on the academic arena. Catch the new show every Monday on these platforms. Confirm your voter registration status at any time from anywhere. Visit bvrinspection.zec.org.zw Enter only your surname and ID number. And presto, thank the Zimbabwe Human Rights Monitors platform for this reminder. Welcome back. It's Into Zimbabwe. And like I said earlier on, today we are discussing um, on the issue of child marriages. And in simple terms, a child marriage is marriage to persons below the age of 18. So in Zimbabwe, child marriages are a criminal practice, but it is actually wildly um, practiced. So Memory Machaya was a 14-year-old girl who died during childbirth at an apostolic church um, shrine and was buried two hours later, according to news, Leah. Oh, okay, yeah, so when we look into this issue, like we said before, Memory Machaya herself was married off mm. at the age of 11, mm. and then she died at 14. Mm. And this itself is illegal, that's the first thing. Mm. We have to look at what causes child marriages within the context of Memory Machaya's issue. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a norm, it's traditional practice within the Joan Marange church, where she worships, where she worshipped Mm -hmm. during lively days and th it is purported that they are married off based on what the holy spirit says it's more of like divine instruction mm -hmm. so now that makes young girls or young ladies victims of child marriage and marrying off a girl at 11 and even making her grow in the marriage and having her give birth at the age of 14 is a crime and there are a lot of crimes involved in this before we even go down to her death we have to look at issues to do with pedophilia we have to also look at statutory rape. Mm. You know, we have to also look at child abuse. We have to also look at sexual harassment. So there's a plethora of abuses that happen to children in the Joan Maranga Church. But that doesn't only happen mm. in the apostolic sects. It, there are a lot of memories who are not of apostle, who do not subscribe to the apostolic faith. We, we, it happens in high density suburbs. It happens even in rural areas. Mm. And it's because of just traditions. The African tradition believes that once a girl falls pregnant, the man who impregnates her or the, the boy who impregnates her automatically becomes a husband. Mm. And that's what happens with the marriage tradition of Kutiziswa. You know, you end up having kids going into a child-to-child -child marriage or adult-to-child and there are a lot of things that happen. Mm. You understand? So Liam, uh, let's look at uh, in a situation of uh, child marriage, who is wrong and with what? Because the problem is maybe people don't just don't understand. Maybe they're just ignorant and they don't even know um, the parents marrying off the children are actually guilty of violating the constitution and that's child abuse, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then the man marrying the child or the woman marrying the child, because you know we have to be gender inclusive on these matters, mm -hmm. uh, is also guilty of one, uh, child marriages as a crime itself. And then in the event that they do have intercourse, that's pedophilia, and then we also have to look at issues around statutory rape because mm. that's an underaged minor. Mm. So that is what everybody is guilty of right now. The major actors, the, the one marrying the child and the ones marrying off the child. And then the one who presides over the marriage now, 
for example in a village court setup where if you know one impregnates a young minor and mm. then they go to the chief's court and then the chief says for like there has to be some sort of reparation mm. to to forego the issue and then maybe the, the, the perpetrator says he wants to marry off the child he loves the girl mm. and then the chief says okay and the victim is married off as exactly. a way of paying for rep exactly mm. so now th all that you know the one presiding over that is actually complicit in a crime of pedophilia is complicit in the crimes of child abuse mm -hmm. complicit even in the aftermath of marrying off the child because statistics have it that nearly 50 percent or 55 percent of girls that give birth below the age of 18 mm -hmm. die during childbirth mm -hmm. so you see there's cul culpable homicide issues to do with that Yes, and speaking to the issue of memory matcha, it's just that the issue came on the spotlight because yeah. of social media users. Mm -hmm. And I remember the police even uh, released a press release yeah. um, on the issue of memory matcha and say they are still doing investigations. Yeah. So I think the police are reluctant, you know, in True. dealing with these issues. They are not giving the issue of child marriages the, the the seriousness that it deserves. Exactly. There's a lot of complacence when, mm. it, when it comes to that. Yes, we have seen Edson Kereke in 2014, 13, 15 being taken into custody and being sentenced. Fine. He's just one among many. Mm. Once upon a time, in two, that was 2016 or 17, I, if I, if my memory serves me well, when Honorable Timba Mliswa called out Honorable Joseph Chino Timba for also being married to a 16 year old, mm. well, mm -mm. you know, that's an issue that was just maybe people politicized it, but then that was something also worth investigating on. Mm. Has there been an investigation? No. And then we also come down to what society is doing due to lack of knowledge and mm. ignorance to the constitution, the laws, and understanding the gravity of how much this is an abuse. A lot of people in our societies are not reporting these cases even those in the apostolic sector they're not reporting these things to the police the ZRP victim friendly unit is not even doing their job in going down to the masses to educate mm -hmm. them on the evils of child marriages even you see CSOs or NGOs that are responsible for this Musasa, Shamari Manaskana, they haven't been doing enough mm -hmm. in educating society. If we are going to do, uh, to probably go on the ground, we're going to be shocked with the statistics of children who are married off below the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there are many memories out there exactly. who, who have not um, been brought to the spotlight. Exactly. Um, and maybe the therapy and these government institutions need to step up and exactly. look at these issues of child marriages and we do know who is doing this mm -hmm. for example uh, the apostolic sect mm -hmm. um, how come these people are insulated um, from 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 justice mm -hmm. what's going on well uh, Karen you see what happens uh, it's, it's something so complex and it appears so simple you know it you, you, we have to look at this firstly you said we know we have seen it and it has seemed to be as if it's normal. Mm. That's the first part. Mm. And it's normal to see a parent who is aged 19 years old, especially the mother being aged 19. What causes these things? That's the first thing. Teenage pregnancies, unplanned or unwanted teenage pregnancies. And as a way to punish a misbehaving child, a promiscuous child for having premarital sex, they are married off. So that's the first thing. And that's based on what? Culture, as I mentioned mm. before, culture. So now when it's culture, culture makes everything seem normal, natural, and never changing, or shouldn't change. That's the first thing. And no one reports it there because they would say, Mwana Rutam Skanzo, they should carry the cross of premarital sex. Mm. That's the first thing. And then when we look at now to the minute uh, focus of the, 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 the apostolic sect, it has much to do with indoctrinations. It has much to do with religious norms it has much to do with its normalization and traditionalization within that church for example it is based it is actually claimed to be based on divine instruction so now because it is about faith and tradition it therefore makes it normal to people and when it's normal it makes it gives people less enthusiasm to fight it we don't we can't really say they have an option to buy out because it's based on faith and tradition remember tradition makes everything seem right natural and never meant to change so that itself makes a, a systemic insulation then now when we also look at the political aspects surrounding these things i'm sure you have seen that every time when we're headed for elections in zimbabwe an incumbent head of state who is eyeing for public office or mm. is eyeing re-election visits these churches mm. we've seen president robert mugabe 
may his soul rest, rest in peace, with his wife, Grace, mm. going to visit these people. And when they do, do they speak uh, against these issues? No, they don't. They don't. My Mugabe, once upon a time, spoke, you know, addressing these people. Mm. Did she address that issue as a woman, a mother? And that time she was secretary of the ZANU PF Women's League. Mm. So gender issues were at the core of her duty to address in Zimbabwe, mm. especially mm. issues that have to do with patriarchy, because remember child marriages and child abuse have much to do with the asymmetrical arrangement of power dynamics in a society, particularly focusing on patriarchy. Did she speak at those things? She didn't. Fast forward, President Emerson Mnangagwa. Mm. Mm. You, you, he has been there. They even pre gave a, pre twenty eighteen elections, elections. Mm. and they even gave a prophecy of him claiming victory, mm. you know, taking victory. Mm. Mm. Did he even speak about that? No, he did. So now let's look at the politics around it. They gave a divine prediction of him becoming president mm. of Zimbabwe after elections. They have bought his favor already. That's you know the new ones of politics. And then secondly, him going there to seek their vote. He is struck by the principle of polit political correctness. Mm. And by being politically correct, you don't speak against people's practices. You, si you remain silent on them, you don't comment, mm. or rather you side with them. But silence is complicit. So all heads of state that have led Zimbabwe since 1987, when we had the office of the executive president, have been complicit in child marriages because they have had the face-to-face -face interaction with the people practicing them at the most noticeable level, but they didn't do anything. Even if laws were there, they never reminded them of it. I do feel like maybe there are loopholes uh, within the country's laws, mm -hmm. um, you know, policy inconsistency when mm -hmm. it comes to the issue of child marriages, mm -hmm. because there's the Marriage Act, you know, there are several uh, laws that govern uh, marriages in Zimbabwe. We have the Marriage Act, we have the Constitution itself, and other laws that we are signatories of, for example, the African Youth Charter. So what do you think needs to be done in terms of closing the gaps or the loopholes that are there to make sure that no one is insulated uh, from the law? Well, uh, what needs to be done uh, is simple. I'll also borrow from what Paida said on an episode I watched of Free to Learn. In fact, I hosted it, of Free to Learn, where she said it's a matter of aligning laws mm. and making sure that even the international statutory instruments that Zimbabwe has gratified mm. are in tandem with our laws, mm. starting with the African chart on the rights and welfare of a child, mm. coming on with the Universal Declaration of Rights, the International Convention on Social Cultural Rights, Social Economic and Cultural Rights, coming on to the Constitution, the Marriage Act, the Criminal Law and Codification and Reform Act, all those things need to be aligned together so that there is no dogmacy, there is no, you know, ambiguity mm. in as to where the crime is. And there should be there should be also codified sentencing. There should be sentencing because right now, even if we are to arrest every actor in it, fine. The husband pedophilia, we said statutory rape. We we, we spoke of um, child abuse as well. The parents, it's child abuse, just child abuse. But what form of child abuse? You understand? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the village chiefs that are complicit in these things in a raw setup, mm -hmm. or the, 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 the pastors, the, the prophets, the religious leaders that are complicit in this issue. Just for them being complicit, what are the charge? And to what punishment are they being sentenced to? And then secondly, there is need for all progressive and sane um, forces of society, CSO, police, teachers, intellectuals, we young people, especially the informed young people, to start going to the ground and engaging these people. Mm. Because like I told you, it's a norm where it happens, in the spaces where it happens. These things happen as a norm, they're normal. Let's engage them. We have a lot of intellectual and informed people that know the wrong in this, that also affiliate to this religion. Every Friday, every Saturday, when they go to church wearing their white garments, when they get a chance to speak, let them in, engage, let them have that conversation. But it also starts by educating them. Mm. And we have to go down and educate the most influential people there. Mm -hmm. Let's identify, because I know this, the church is a setup of Mporofita, Vaoneswi, Vanyori, Msondos. We have to go engage those people mm. and tell them the evils of this, because they hold leadership and they hold influence. So they have to go back and then teach others. Then in Parliament, since last week, since the whole week, even on Wednesday, where Parliament traditionally sits, mm. I didn't hear the issue being discussed. People were busy fighting each other on partisan lines, but we haven't heard even the female parliamentarians taking substantive action against it. The Gender Commission, the Ministry of Health and Child Care should be active in these things right now. It should be mainstreamed and there has to be real action towards it. Right now, we should be seeing prosecutions. We should be seeing results of an investigation. Mm. Zetara P owes us an explanation and a prosecution. They do. Exactly. So that is what we want to see.
because laws operate on the basis of precedent mm. so they need to set an example by punishing those involved in memory much as issue memory mm. deserves justice so that's all that really needs to be done it doesn't it's not a one-day event it's a series of processes but it needs to be done and how do you get things done by starting mm -hmm. so child rights are human rights and it is everyone's duty to put a hand in ending child marriages so thank you so much liam kaninga for joining me i'm karen manzera and do join me in the next episode of into zimbabwe it's goodbye for now